Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Valvoline and Spares Box. Don't forget BCW 5 on checkout. Today we're diving back into the Sigma engine and uh, because every single comment in the, in the uh, video was get a balance shaft delete kit, we have done that. And it, more excitingly, we have our cylinder head back, which already has our valve springs and our tie cam fitted. Um, the cylinder head shop were actually kind enough to even set the valve lash. However, once the engine's properly assembled in the car and running, once, I, once we get it to temperature, we will go and readjust that lash just to make sure. Um, it may also differ marginally once the cylinder head's torqued down to spec. Um, so it is something we will definitely be rechecking once it's in the car and running. But the aim of the game today is basically get this reassembled to a, a, a long motor. So we're gonna get cylinder head on, our timing chain on, our balance delete kit in. We're gonna be cleaning all of our gasket faces up to make sure that the thing doesn't leak because these things do have a bit of a habit of leaking. So uh, gonna be plenty to go on today with this engine. And yeah, hopefully by the end of it, we'll nearly have it ready to drop into the Sigma, which should be sitting here, but it's in storage. So sorry for that. Let's open the sandwich. Fresh. I've just finished uh, surfacing the deck of the block. I haven't gone to town on it, basically just knocked off the old gasket and given it a clean face. Um, I know there's gonna be some, some machinists out there that are dying inside, but this is tried and true for me and it works. Um, the other option is only that we're gonna be completely stripping the block, re-deck it, do all that sort of gear. And I honestly don't think it's worth it for this engine that's gonna make like 100 kilowatts if we're lucky. Um, this gasket, this face combined with a graphite gasket and a resurfaced head and ARP head studs, I really don't think we're gonna have an issue. Um, so, sorry to all the machinists and engineers out there, but this has worked for me in the past and 99% of uh, mechanics workshops are gonna be either doing a stone or a lot of them literally just buff the gasket off uh, and that's actually gonna chop the face a lot more than a flat stone. So, um, yeah, it, it works for me. Um, if you wanna use that method, go nuts. If you don't, that's up to you but we're gonna keep slapping this thing together. So balance shaft delete kit. So it comes with a shorter oil pump chain, get a, uh, a front seal, set of timing cover gaskets and an oil pump gasket. And the main part of the kit is in this box, which is a sleeve, which I believe you knock in, in the, where the front of that would have sat. And a short little shaft, which I believe replaces the uh, oil pump side balance shaft. So we're gonna whack these in. And I'm gonna put a little bit of, first and foremost, I'm gonna clean that bore really well. Then I'm actually gonna put a bit of uh, bearing retainer on this, but not too much that it actually fills that oil gallery. So you do need to be careful if you're gonna put something on this shell. Uh, but yeah, make sure that it is in there secure and it's not gonna come out, because if this comes out, you'll lose oil pressure. pump balance shaft deleted so we can now put the oil pump back on once we clean the gasket faces
I've just removed the Rollmaster timing chain, which is an upgraded chain out of the kit. Uh, unfortunately, they haven't marked the timing marks or the timing links on the chain. So I've actually pulled the original chain out of my parts bucket, which luckily I held on to. I've found a datum on both chains that I've marked both of those first spots. Then I've counted my OEM chain and between those link plates, I've got 20 links effectively. Um, so I've recounted the same on the, on the new chain and I've marked both of those two timing marks on the chain. Uh, we do have an adjustable cam, like a vernier adjustable wheel. So we are going to be able to use that to dial the cam in later. Um, however, for today, I just want to get it basically completely assembled um, and that'll mean we can adjust it. But without having these marks and these reference points, it's actually quite hard to put it together. So uh, yeah, having those on the chain will give us a lot, a lot less of a headache dialing the cam to the crank to get the base timing. Um, then it means we can actually get a dial gauge and all that sort of gear and, and dial the cam in correctly to the cam specs from the cam card. We've got everything pretty well assembled now. We've got our cylinder head on and torqued. We've got our timing chain fitted. We've got all of our tensioner, or our tensioner and all of our guides fitted. We've also got our shortened oil pump chain. Uh, this chain is part of the balance delete kit, as I previously mentioned. We've also got our uh, oil pressure retention sleeve in the block uh, because this uh, front journal on the, ba the balance shaft is actually uh, pressure fed. So if you just pull the shaft out and don't replace something in there, it means you've got zero oil pressure basically. Um, so yeah, all of these things together means it's pretty much time to put the timing cover on and then once we do that, I'm going to have some lunch.
Well, every day we work on it, we're getting closer and closer to getting this engine into the Sigma. We've now got it completely assembled as a long motor. I've also thrown my Redline dual uh, Weber inlet manifold on. I didn't want to put the carbies on though because it's going to be quite close to the strut tower. So when we fit the engine, I want to have plenty of room to be able to kind of get it in the bay, get it happy um, and not be worried about damaging quite expensive carbies and all that sort of gear. So. Um, for the most part, it's really ready to throw in. I haven't fitted the crank pulley because I'm actually going to use the two litre crank pulley because the Gilmer drive kit is designed only for the two litre crank pulley. Um, same, I haven't got a clutch and flywheel on it yet. I also haven't fitted the rear main, that's still sitting on the bench, but I figured when I do the clutch kit and the, the flywheel that I'll just do the rear main at that point. Um, the distributor, I'm most likely going to reuse the two litre one. However, a few people have told me that the 2.61, which I had and sold, is actually better. Um, also, the 2.61 is a generic Bosch unit, so other than the physical body, the cap, the rotor button and the uh, ignition module are all just off-the-shelf Bosch parts, which were used in tons of Australian assembled uh, 80s cars. So um, I'll most likely actually buy one of those back. Um, in my head, it was easier to just kind of reuse the 2.0-litre one, but a lot of people have said that those 2.0-litre ones actually have issues, and I believe I may actually have that issue with my own one. So. Um, yeah, rather than potentially transferring that issue across to the new 2.6 and all of that sort of gear, um, yeah, I'd much rather just have the correct stuff or the best stuff available. And uh, then, then once this thing goes in the car, it's going to be a really nice cruiser. I want to be able to literally jump in this thing and drive it anywhere. I want to be able to drive it to Melbourne or Queensland or whatever. Um, so yeah, hopefully this thing will see some pretty epic road trips in the future. Um, but yeah, we're pretty much going to pack it up for today because as you can see, the Sigma's not here, so we can't fit it. Um, but we've, uh, yeah, kicked some goals. Oh yeah, we do have our cam in here. Um, I haven't dialed it in yet though. I did mention before we're gonna do the rocker um, adjustments again once the car's sort of been heated up. Um, so we'll probably actually dial the cam in in the car because there's really not much, not much reason not to. Um, we'll probably just get it warm, pull the radiator back out because it does need a good coolant flush anyway. The cooling system's still got a lot of rusty water and crap in it. so. Um, I'll probably try and I might even try and actually flush that on the stand. I'm um, going to block everything up to make it watertight. I'll also pressure wash it so that we can actually paint the block and the timing cover. The rock cover, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet um, because we still need to work out a mount for the accelerator cable, which is obviously going to drive our throttle shaft linkage. Uh, but I'll fair chance I'll actually tidy it up a lot and cut a lot of the, um, the tabs and stuff that are welded off, welded onto it off. And then I might even send it to off to get powder coated. Uh, but we'll work that out a bit later. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.